So I work on the internet for a living and I can't figure out how to get my video going here. So your camera it might be. Um... Oh, there we go. So I took a minute out <laughs> of social distancing. This is one of our governor's social distancing zones. So uh, I just took a little swim <laughs> and I'm ready to talk to you about it. Uh, Completely it's, it's, safe. Completely it's, safe. Yeah, I mean, it is. it's just like a miracle. It just goes away. It just goes away. I feel like the only headline we've got in the news here in New Zealand about Florida, anywhere in Florida, is the fact that people are just either on spring break or they're just going to the beach regardless. Um, pretty much like what you're um, hypothesizing here. Yeah, it's really weird. And even, um, let me get this um, back to that. I kind of love it. <laughs> I really should know more. I should do better than. No, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with this situation. I'm just going to keep this. I'm just going to keep it. I think it's a good look. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, it's really weird because at first I thought the governor was doing a pretty good job. I mean, he seemed attentive, like when it first, first started. But then, like we're under a, a stay at uh, uh, stay at home order, basically, a shelter in place, I guess it's called. But it's only because the mayor and the county did it. I mean, the the governor, there's no there's no shelter in place order from the governor. Um, it it seems this, this it seems like the the problem wherever you are in America is it's just a communication problem. Things aren't being communicated at all, and it's like departments aren't talking to each other. Is that just a problem with the size of your population and there being fifty different states, or is it like what what is going on? What I'm seeing and and what is being reported is that people it's really kind of against it's a it's uh, against like party lines almost like people that were more conservative thought this was all a hoax and something to get Trump in trouble. And so people are still actively out and around just to, just to say, fuck you. You know, I think that's, I think that's the issue. I don't think it's, Oh, we don't know the right thing. Or when you have Trump up there saying things that are contradicting, you know, people, people want to believe what they want to believe, I think. So if someone, if the president goes up and says, oh, don't worry about it, then people are gonna think, okay, I'm not gonna worry about it because that's because I don't want to worry about it. Yeah, yeah, and it almost feels like Trump's messaging was changing so often that who, whatever you believed you could take from Trump, the thing that would make you feel better about things, whether that was, this is being managed and is a disaster for a while to the message now, which is um, we're gonna be open again by Easter, right? Right, and, and now it's 30 days, you know, it's been extended. Since so well, what's, what's, what's day to day life looking like for you over there? Because here in New Zealand, we've got four weeks um, in, in home isolation at the moment. It might be extended. Um, the only things open really are supermarkets. You can only walk in your neighborhood. So most of my going outdoors would be to walk to the supermarket, do my shopping, come back home. Is that similar to um, Orlando? It's, it's pretty similar. I mean, uh, people, I think this is my third week at home. I did a week, like the studio that you visited is really the one that only I went to. So I was working from there, not doing any shoots or anything for about a week. And then last week, uh, I was at home all week. I went out to the grocery store a couple of times. My partner is, one reason I'm taking it really seriously is my partner has uh, chronic uh, emphysema, or not uh, chronic bronchitis. Right. And so, you know, he was terrified from the beginning. Uh, you know, I was going, don't worry about it. And then, you know, as it started really getting more serious, so he was really worried about it, but he was under the process of a, of a medical treatment. That's like a six week treatment that he had to go into every day. So he's about halfway through that. So he's still leaving the house every day to drive over to this uh, appointment, the medical appointment, and the doctor comes out and walks him in. It's all safe, but that's, so he's out and around. I'm pretty much at, at home. I did do a shoot yesterday um, after that was my first one in two weeks. I have about a month of stuff in the can. Yeah. And one model that I haven't shot in a long time, he's got a daughter and we, you know, I, I met over at my studio. So it was just he and I 
and did a shoot, which was it was a tickling shoot, and it was it was pretty weird. It was weird, you know. Yeah, did, did you sort of talk through any safety kind of things you wouldn't typically talk about, or are you sterilizing, or what's the difference? Ab absolutely, uh, you know, I I talked to him and said, you know, here's what's going on. I'm taking it really seriously, uh, and you know, made sure that he hadn't had any symptoms or anything, or he was, you know, quarantining himself. And then once he got there, it was we met outside, like under my carport there, and then picked the clothes that we were going to use mm. and then brought the clothes in. So we weren't, you know, there's that video of the doctor of unpacking groceries and stuff. I kind of use that as a guide. So picked the clothes outside, came in, made him take off all his clothes in my foyer, go take a shower, mm. come back. And, uh, you know, not, and then the, the regular part of the studio, we knew that except for the clothes, everything was sterile. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but it's a tickling scene. So I did a tickling scene with a mask on. And then when I was editing it today, I was trying to, I edited out myself. So I don't want to do a tickling scene with a mask on. But, <laughs> you know, here's, I don't want to do a tickling scene with a guy, with a tick, the guy getting tickled has a mask on either. So, I would do it a little bit differently next time. I think I would wear uh, goggles or something because yeah, it's, I guess it's just not a great look, is it? In a in a sort of erotic uh, bit of it's, video to have. Some I mean, I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a fetish like that, but I I don't really want to. I don't really want to go there yet. Maybe yeah. I want to be able to like look at my catalog and say. Oh, there's nothing coronavirus uh, themed, you yeah. know. Yeah, but, no, it's, absolutely. It's um, I, I guess it's that weird thing of um, I, I feel like when we're all looking back at what we've made during this time or haven't made, it's this weird mm -hmm. period in time where it's it's going to be that time where oh, that's why this thing's different. We remember right. some challenges you faced during that time because we're doing things completely differently. Yeah, it really life changes on a dime. This is definitely proof. Have so you, you were supposed you to be here in Florida, right? Sorry? You were supposed to be here in Florida, right? Yeah, yeah, I was. I had a project I was, um, I've been aiming to go and start recording over there. Um, well, yeah, this year, but at the moment, um, with the travel bans in place, um, I guess across the States, but also um, here in New Zealand, it's just completely stalled. So I'm kind of sitting here working on other things, but it is this weird, you know, you gear up to, you know, you have your life, right? You've got your projects lined up. Um, you have your things, but obviously it's for the greater good that we're all staying um, in our home. So long term, it's going to be better. But it is that certain level of frustration where it's you want to be doing stuff, you want to be making your videos. I want to be out mm -hmm. recording. Mm -hmm. um, have you have you noticed um, any traffic changes at your um, at my friend's feet? I haven't looked at actual traffic. Um, I think that. I think it's about the same, to be honest. You know, I've noticed like, uh, you know, looking at like my numbers are like uh, financials and stuff, mm. uh, they've, they've just about stayed the same. So that is, I'm, I'm really, really, really happy about that. But I know that's not, you know, something that's gonna last as, you know, people are getting laid off and stuff like that. Mm. So, which is, uh, you know, the even economic impact really, I think it's gonna be a lot bigger than people think. But so so far so good. I'm lucky that I that I work you know pretty much for myself. Yeah, and that the industry is something that people can look at from home. Um, but I don't think that uh, well, it's not a bump, but just not a downturn is a is a really a blessing right now. Yeah, is it like are you? What's the general feeling with there with you and your friends? Is it slowly getting more and more? Um, like, oh God, this is going to be going on for much longer than we originally thought, or is it, are you keeping things pretty even keel the whole way through? I think as it unfolds that, I'm never really, you know, I think it's kind of the same realization that I've had that as you, as it's got seri more serious and more serious and you think, wow, can I stay home for, for two weeks? And then it's, can I stay home for 30 days? And then, you know, they talk about three months. So I think it's just kind of a gradual process. But I will say, I, uh, I was talking to a couple of my friends and uh, who I love dearly, but I know that they were going a little bit star crazy. And one was like, 
um, you know, the, this county is, is locked, locked down. Yeah. And my friend said, um, hey, I'm thinking about going and playing like mini golf if we go in the, the next county over because there's not a, you know, there's not a stay at home order there. And I thought I was kidding. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, no, 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 that's not how this works. That's not how we should be thinking about this. Yes. And then, you know, that uh, the, uh, so I sent him the, a gif of uh, Donald Sutherland from the end of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. You know, yeah. like that. <laughs> Which is a really we, effective gif. We just and then I went to, I talked to my other friend and then said, can you believe so-and-so, who I dearly love, yeah. uh, will, <laughs> Well, you know, wants to, and, and my other friend was like, I'm totally down. Let's, you know, let's do it. So I was like, are you crazy? So, you know, and these are people that are my age, you know, that are 55 to 60 years old. There is, people don't like being told what to do. There is that element. People of, don't. I'm living my life and it, it's frustrating because you need to communicate that to people in a civil way. You can't get angry at them. So do you think it's a different, are you seeing that same sort of thing in New Zealand or do you feel like, yeah, I mean, that's I, I, what I've been reading is, you know, Americans are so... No, I, I think so. I think there's always going to be that element of the population that just wants to get on with their life. Um, the police here just opened up a website where you can specifically go and tell on people for basically if you see them gathering or doing something they shouldn't. And that site crashed within about, um, I think it was 30 minutes. So that shows, A, that there are a lot of people probably out doing things they shouldn't be doing, um, and B, we like ratting each other out, which I'm not sure if that's a good or a, or a bad thing. But I think in any population, there's going to be um, groups of people that just want to get on with their lives, and I think those are the people that hopefully come around and realize, because that whole thing, it's not about you, it's about who you're going to affect by your actions, you know, and that seems to be a message that that's, takes a long time to get through to people. And I don't want to, I haven't heard this line of, of, uh, of thinking or, or down the road, and I don't want to sound like Debbie Downer, but you know, the, like a lot of viruses cause birth defects and things like that. And like, you know, uh, the German measles and, you know, other things like that. And that seems to be something that, you know, it could be that, nine months down the road, we find that, wow, there's really something else to this virus that we, you know, a medical aspect of it that we didn't expect, because... It's an aspect you know, I hadn't even thought of, and thing. I, you know, that that's, um, yeah, I mean, we know so little about this thing, and there's also that idea, I saw a headline the other day that was talking about how many, probably there'll be like a bunch of corona babies that are being born that were conceived during this time when people are shoved together in these situations so inevitably right. baby's going to be conceived i hadn't even you know, thought the funny, funny thing is the governor of florida he just had a baby today like during all this his wife just had a baby so oh, yeah. like on top of everything else to have, to have a little infant <laughs> Far out. what a time to be raising a kid though as well right it's like it's weird enough without um that aspect coming into it yeah exactly um, really? Well, I've got you there, and, and I think in theme with, with this wonderful um, realistic background you've given us behind you, um, what, the answer sort of once and for all, why, um, why is Florida so um, batshit insane? I feel like you're the only Floridian I've spoken to recently, in my whole life probably, who seems sane. Um, what's going on in your state? I don't know, but I... You know, if the guy that runs the gay foot fetish site is the sane one, I think Florida really has a message problem. <laughs> um, I don't know. And, you know, I did, I did never realize that until really a couple of years ago that there was like a Florida man thing. But, man, I think, and I was about, I was just about to say, I don't think Orlando or Central Florida is like that, but it's, you know, we've got George, uh, 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 what's his name, living uh, up in Sanford, who was the one that... Uh, George who? George Zimmerman lives... Like, oh, God. Very yeah. He lives in Central yeah. Florida. You know, Casey Anthony. Yep. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's because people come... come <laughs> you got a real... A real uh, there's a lot of uh, rural areas in Florida, and then there's a lot of... I don't know. 
there's a that's the x factor that's what that's what it is Can yeah I just say oh I, I love i love my time there i can't wait to get back like it's just for, from being in new zealand where everything's really low key generally and and people lay low i everywhere i went in orlando and the short time i spent there um when i was visiting you was just it was wild everywhere i looked it was um it was in in insanity which was was pretty special yeah people are nice here i don't, I don't know what it is that makes florida people so weird though yeah um look before i take off i don't want to talk your head off um is there anything you've been watching or listening to that uh you'd want to sort of give as as advice for people to tune into to stay sane yeah as a matter of fact um it's funny because i was a big westworld watcher for two seasons and oh, the first season up. so good second season i kind of lost me third season i'm back yeah in. yeah that last yeah the last part was it was mad but the I'm not, I, I feel like anxious, like I can't commit to things that I normally would. Like sitting down and watching a two hour movie is like, I'm just not in that headspace. So I've been doing a lot of uh, podcasts, listening. Yeah. Um, uh, How Did This Get Made is a favorite. Awesome. Then, uh, I love that. And then I've been watching Mystery Science Theater. Uh, <laughs> all the time that keeps me sane just on a, on a regular basis oh that's that's dope as hell oh i love it i love it and then um i've been watching some film plays like broadway.com i'm kind of a big oh, nice. right right i've never been there so like the i watched the uh sweeney todd the original cast and uh which you know angela lansbury and stuff like that which is you know dark and it, that really filled that really filled a space for me and then i'm a big uh crime podcast listener yeah. and one of the ones i listen to is called criminal um mm -hmm. and uh phoebe judge who is the one that uh is the announcer or the, mm -hmm. the podcast or the announcer that's uh but she started doing a, a chapter a day of uh agatha christie's first Poirot novel which is just kind of like 20 minutes a day and it's 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 fun it was just like a, a perfect little yeah. thing to get me from day to day so that's i was so appreciative when i found that so it's it's like the the little things you know my attention is very short and so you know listening to to podcasts and things that are shorter are are the way yeah i'm things. finding exactly the same thing it's just i think it's this background anxiety and also that just that need you've got to kind of check in with whether it's Twitter or what is going on in the news or what the latest thing is, that it makes it difficult to sort of sit down and commit. Because I think you've got to be in like quite a calm headspace to, to really commit to a, a two hour film and to enjoy it. Whereas if you can just like duck in and duck out of littler things, it seems to be the time to do that, which is probably why everyone's motoring through something like, I don't know, like, like like podcasts and like Tiger King on Netflix and all that kind of thing. It's mm -hmm, all mm -hmm. doable, these littler things. So Tiger King, that's one thing you're doing. What else are you watching or listening? Um, yeah, I like think like the whole planet. I watched that show. Um, I'm doing a lot of podcasts. Um, I'm addicted to the Daily at the moment, just for news. Um, mm -hmm. Up and Vanished is a crime podcast that is just oh yeah, yeah. readable that I've been listening to. Uh -huh. Um. There's actually a Tiger King podcast that came before the film that's worth listening to. A guy sort of did a lot of the the research into what ended up, I guess, being in the in the in the series. Um, and Reply All, it's a it's which is a sort of a kind of I don't know. It's probably a similar sort of story. So like tickle these weird internet wormholes that these hosts go down and research and find out, and they just take you to the strangest places. And it's so well produced. They're these perfect little sort of half hour episodes so those are probably my go-to's at the moment but apart we we did watch um uh, me and my housemates watched uh uh contagion last night which was that's a that's fun <laughs> it was rough it was actually it was i forgot how how full on that film is um and um yeah that's that's worth um i'd, I'd say it's worth checking out if you're in in the mood otherwise stay away yeah, I saw that a, a while ago. I think if, if people are in the mood for like a, a, a virus movie, uh, Outbreak is the way to go because it's so stupid. Oh, it's so bad. The opening of Outbreak, I just watched the opening the other day, where it's, uh, it's, it just, camera comes down and there's just explosions and monkey screams. It's like straight on, like immediately. 
Yeah, yeah, so yeah, good. yeah. They really, and it's like, oh my God, there's a rip in my suit. Oh, as soon as you put the, you know, the needle in, oh, I'm, I'm better. It's so <laughs> dumb. <laughs> I was like the, uh, it's like the asteroid, like uh, landing on the asteroid movie. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm getting all time fave. All time Uh, fave. uh, Um, Hey, thank thank you very much. I appreciate you checking in with us here at the beach. Oh no, no. All good. I've got one final question for you. Um, That that clip you have of me being tickled, which occasionally um, makes the odd sale. I'm just wondering how it's going overall. Is it it proven popular? Do, Do people want to watch it? Are people just buying it as a joke? Um, what's your take? I don't, think a, I don't think people are buying it as a joke. Um, I think it's popular. It's more popular than I expected it to be. So, like I put it out for free on, uh, you know, Twitter and made it available, but I've just put it up on the store. And I will gladly give you uh, residuals from that as soon as I get residuals from Tickled and, and then we'll call it even. <laughs> Gauntlet laid. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you stay well, safe, my friend. Sorry, what was that? You. I just want you to stay safe and your housemates and everything too. Yeah, yeah. Same, same to you. Um, and I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad you're, you're from the perspective of you are staying in and you are being safe, especially you say your partner's already compromised. So yeah. you've got to be. And the more people that stay in, um, the more likely you guys are to stay safe. So I'm, I'm just glad I'm talking to someone in Florida who is not actually um, at the beach flouting um, the good advice that medical professionals have told them. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go swimming with a mask on. <laughs> yeah, good man. All right, Richard, I'll let you go in. Uh, at the end of North Pole. <laughs> thank you, thank you, David. No worries, see you later, buddy. See you, bro.